Now, will you notice verse 12? Now, this is a very important verse, by the way. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen. He called the name of it Ebenezer. Now, that means a stone of help, saying, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Now, this is a very interesting stone. I look at it as a stone of remembrance. It looked back to the past. It was a stone of recognition, a stone for the present, and it was a stone of revelation, a stone for the future. Hitherto, up to this point, up to right now, God has helped us. And it's always customary for us to look back over the past. Remember the Lord said through Paul to the Philippians, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work, and you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Friends, has God brought you up to this point? Is he leading you today? Is he guiding you today? Is he brought you up to this moment? Well, if he has, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. He's brought us up to this point. Well, he's going to continue to do that. And someone has said that memory plays upon the keyboard of the past. And you can retrace your footsteps. And God's given us memories that we can have roses in December. Memory plays on the keyboard of the past. And when it does, I'm sure all of us can say, Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. But it's not only that, but that was a stone of recognition. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Oh, Joshua could say, As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, David says, for he is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And I personally, I want to say so. Oh, the Lord is good, friends. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. The Lord has helped us. And right now, even now, he's the one that's helping us. A businessman said some time ago, He says, you know, the use of time might be likened to the terminology of banking. He says, yesterday is a canceled check. Tomorrow is a promissory note. But today is cash. So spend it wisely. A stone of recognition. Are you recognizing God today in your life? That's what Samuel meant by that Ebenezer stone. It was a stone of revelation, not only hitherto, but henceforth. The Lord is my shepherd. David says, I shall not want. He looked into the future. And someone has said, I am very interested in the future because I expect to spend the rest of my life in the future. And I want to be reasonably sure of what kind of a future It's going to be, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. All things do work together for good to those that love God. Dr. Tari always said that Romans 8, 28 was a soft pillar for a tired heart. It's a stone of revelation. It looks into the future, and it was that for the nation Israel And you can just put this stone down in the history of the nation Israel, for it's written on this stone. You can also put it down in, I think, your life. You can mine. And we need an Ebenezer stone today. And I trust that you have one in your life and that I have one in my life today. Now, let's continue to move on. Verse 13, So the Philistines were subdued. And they came no more into the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And very frankly, this, I think, can be said to be the time, and from here on, that the Philistines never were again as dominant and formidable as they were before this battle. That's actually how significant it was. And this stone now stands in memory. Actually, it was only about three or four miles north by northwest of Jerusalem, actually in sight of the city. 
Now will you notice verse 15 of 1 Samuel 7. And Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. This is the story. He is a prophet. He's a judge of Israel. And he went from year to year in circuit. He was a circuit judge to Bethel, Gilgal, and Mizpah. And you'll notice it's in an area right north of Jerusalem. And he judged Israel in all those places. And his return was to Ramah, for there was his house. There he judged Israel, and there he built an 